Hello, my name is Jeff from Zymo Research, and today we'll be talking about the analysis of DNA methylation sequencing data, um, especially the bioinformatics aspect of working with next generation sequencing data that assays DNA methylation. And this video will serve as a brief introduction for those who are new to DNA methylation but maybe already are familiar with the basics of next generation sequencing. We'll go through the basic steps of a DNA methylation pipeline and how those differ from other types of, of NGS um, bioinformatics pipelines. And at the very end, we'll give you a resource, uh, directed to a resource where you can run an entire DNA methylation pipeline um, with just a single command. How do we then study DNA methylation using next generation sequencing? Well, it begins with something called bisulfite conversion. And what bisulfite conversion does is it allows us to decode whether a base is methylated or not after we have sequenced our genomic DNA using next generation sequencing. So in bisulfite conversion, there's these two uh, chemical structures that we begin with. First, we have an unmethylated cytosine, and then we have a methylated cytosine. We then undergo the bisulfite conversion. In the case of a cytosine, without that methyl group there, bisulfite conversion converts that to a uracil. And then this is then read as a thiamine or a T on, on a sequencer. However, if that uh, cytosine was actually a uh, 5 uh, methyl cytosine and has this methyl group here, bisulfite conversion will not convert that base. And so then, in our sequencing readout, that remains as a C. So for every cytosine in the reference genome, if we expect it, um, if we sequence a C, then we know that in that, in that read that that base was methylated. And if we sequence a T, then um, we know that that base was actually unmethylated. And so the bioinformatics uses this code and is then able to actually compute percentages of methylation um, genome-wide. So how does it do that? Here's a basic overview of the bioinformatics steps for methylseq data. Like most next generation sequencing libraries, we begin by doing adapter trimming. And one thing that I'll note is with trimming adapters, always be sure to check the manual for both your library prep kit and also your trimming software. And just make sure that the library prep type that you've used doesn't require any special trimming parameters. The next step is alignment. Now alignment is used in in all next generation sequencing uh, analysis from a bioinformatics perspective. However, in the case of DNA methylation data that, has go, uh, that is a bisulfite seq library, there's a special uh, need to deal with that conversion of C to T. And so this requires the use of a bisulfite aware aligner. So even though we're sequencing DNA, a standard DNA aligner like Bowtie 2 is not the appropriate tool. Well, what you actually would want to use is something um, like Bismarck, which actually wraps around Bowtie 2 and uses Bowtie 2 at its core, but it handles the, the fact that some of the reads that we sequence are going to have the bisulfite conversion and some of them won't. So if you look into how that works, it's actually aligned into both a converted and an unconverted um, uh, reference genome and able to make those determinations and make those alignments accurate. So after um, alignment with a specific aligner for DNA methylation data, we then move on to analysis. And the very first step of analysis is something called methylation calling. This is where um, a special program, such as one that's included with Bismarck, or there's another one uh, commonly used called methyl DACL. This takes the, uh, those aligned reads that are in uh, the BAM file that is produced by alignment. And at each uh, cytosine in the genome, it produces a count of how many reads were methylated and how many reads were not methylated. Um, from, from there, it's a simple um, uh, mathematical division to take the number, the number of, of reads that were sequenced that were methylated and divide that by the number of total reads that were sequenced for that given cytosine, and that produces a percent methylation. And so we can actually map this along the genome. In this example, the x-axis would be genomic coordinates and, and the y-axis would be that fraction of methylation. And we can statistically determine what are called DMRs, or differentially methylated regions. And these are determined by using the level of read depth um, as an input for a statistical analysis to determine if these differences are statistically significant or not. And if these differences are statistically significant, then those are ones that we can then pursue biologically to see what they're telling us about gene expression and about our phenotypes of interest. So how does someone get started in running a DNA methylation analysis if someone has um, the uh, the input data, the results of a, of a bisulfite seq um, experiment that they've sequenced and they have the input, which is generally what's called a FASTQ file. If they have those files, there is a, a, a community curated pipeline. It's called NFCore MethylSeq. This um, is something that we can recommend to someone who's new to this because this actually enables you using uh, 
a piece of open source software called NextFlow to, in a single command, run a standard denimethylation pipeline that's been put together using a set of community-curated best practices. So this table here, which we've, which we've derived from um, uh, the link here on GitHub, this shows the more, some more specific steps that are included in NextFlow itself. And one thing that I'll note for someone who's new is that there's both a Bismarck workflow and a BWA meth workflow. So both of these do um, the same thing in that they use a bisulfite aware aligner and then go through to methylation calling. They're just using two different programs to do that. Um, either program is fine. Um, in, in, in our case, we often use Bismarck and then we use methyldacol and we've modified this to use that combination. But either of these is fine. I would suggest um, a beginner could perhaps just use the Bismarck workflow. There's a lot of good documentation about, about Bismarck and, um, and how exactly it works. And then to give a quick overview of, of what's here, we have trimming, like we mentioned. It also adds some QC steps, which will be outputted in a, uh, in a what's called a multi-QC report, where it has a, a, a section for many different types of QC parameters. That's all done automatically by this pipeline. Um, it then goes, after trimming, it goes onto alignment, again, using a bisulfite-specific um, aligner. It goes on to methylation calling using um, a, a program that's bundled in Bismarck or in the case of the BWA meth workflow, a program called methyldacol. And then um, there's some other uh, summary reports that are generated. What this does not do is the downstream statistical analysis that would do something like determine DMRs. But what it does give is it gives um, not only comprehensive quality control information, but it gives the, that methylation calling data. And there's many uh, programs out there that, that one can look for, um, especially in the bioconductor repository. There's programs which will take as input that, that methylation calling data and then can perform the statistics using that data. And so in that case, it's more specific to your experimental design. And so that's why it's not part of the standard pipeline. But just having that methylation calling data is enough to view the data in a genome browser and then is enough to... Um, to go on and doing whatever type of statistical analysis uh, is desired for your, for your research study. So we hope this helps someone who's new to DNA methylation understand a bit about how DNA methylation analysis in next generation sequencing um, from, from terms of bioinformatics is different. Um, here at Zyma Research, we're, we're here to help. If you have any additional questions or you would like to su suggest um, any other topics for future bioinformatics videos, please uh, feel free to contact us or leave a comment below you can always email us at info at zymoresearch.com. Thanks very much, and I hope you have a great day.